Hello, my name is Nick, and welcome to Watch This Now. I'm always on here talking up my favorite streaming service, Shudder, because it's the premier streaming service for horror fans. Whether you like horror, suspense, thriller, what have you, they have everything on here. They've got your retro favorites, modern indies, but I'm all about that sweet, sweet original content, which is why I'm always saying subscribe to Shudder, because more subscribers, more content. You know what I'm saying? They recently made probably their best thing yet, which was the reboot of the horror anthology film Creepshow from the masters Stephen King and George A. Romero. I thought this was a brilliant move, turning it into a horror anthology series in modern day. Love it. The first season had six episodes that played weekly leading up to Halloween, and I wanted to do a season review or cover each episode, but I thought it would be fun to take a look at those six episodes and rank them in order of my favorites so I can prioritize them for you. Let's get into it. Now, I normally don't like to use the term worst, but this episode really is the worst. I did not like either of the tales in it, and that is episode number two. It features the tales Bad Wolf Down and The Finger. Bad Wolf Down takes place during World War II where soldiers are fighting off against werewolves, Nazi werewolves, you know, it's almost like the uh, Rob Zombie trailer that was made for Grindhouse, the werewolf women of the SS, except this is just army dudes. While I like the werewolf design because I like werewolves and think they're never done properly, this episode just did nothing for me. And the other tale, The Finger, it stars the guy from The New Guy as like this drifter dude who finds a finger. Um, yeah, it just, this whole episode, both of them, I just did not care for it at all, so we're just gonna move right on. Number five on my list happens to be episode number five. It includes the tales Night of the Paw and Times is Tough and Musky Holler. Now, I actually rewatched this episode because I wasn't quite sure about it. I thought maybe I was wrong, and then I rewatched it, and I actually liked it less than I did the first time, which is why it is pretty low on this list. But the first tale, Night of the Paw, is about this woman. She gets in a car accident, ends up at a funeral home, and there is this weird mortician guy. There are elements of the mad scientist and zombies but it doesn't really come together for me totally. I didn't love it, but you might, it's not a bad one really, just it's not as good as the rest of them. But the second part of this episode, I liked even less. Times is tough in Musky Holler. It's I, I kind of futuristic, sort of a reality game show where people are just sort of like killed by uh, being eaten by zombies on this show. It's it's like so short and simple and fast and it's just kind of there's not really much to it to be perfectly honest so this episode as a whole just there just wasn't much for me and I just you know not that into it for number four on my list I'm gonna place episode three here which has the tales All Hallows Eve and the man in the suitcase all Hallows Eve follows trick-or-treaters on Halloween night as they roam about a neighborhood in search of uh, some particular doors to knock on. I thought I was going to like this a lot more than I did. Unfortunately, it didn't live up to the Halloween Creepshow episode hype that I built up for myself, but it was okay. It was an interesting story, I would say. I'm surprised that the second part of this episode, The Man in the Suitcase, was more entertaining to me, which is just a about a man who returns from a flight and in his suitcase is a man. There's a man stuffed in there and he just so happens to spit out gold coins. It's weird, it's a strange premise, but you know what? It works quite well and I honestly found that tale to be pretty entertaining and if it was matched with one of the other ones on this list, it may the episode would have been higher for me personally. Number three I'm gonna give to episode four, one that I thought was going to be my favorite based off of the synopses for the tales, but you know, it is what it is. This one features The Companion and Lydia Lane's better half. Now The Companion is about this bullied kid who ends up uh, meeting, coming across, uh, discovering a twisted scarecrow that does uh, some good stuff. I love a creepy scarecrow. I love it. So this one was a fun one. I enjoyed it a lot. Not as much as I thought I would, again, but it's still quite good for a little slice of terror. The second half, Lydia Lane's better half, 
is about this professional woman who ends up murdering her lover, and while disposing of the body, she ends up stuck in an elevator with said body. This episode features what I think is the iconic image of season one with Trisha Helfer with the phone light. I thought this episode was going to be a little bit better, but it's okay. It's still one of the better ones in my opinion. Number two I have to give to episode six, which features the tales Skinwalkers and By the Silver Water of Lake Champlain. Skinwalkers is about a man who is a bit overweight, but it looks like there's just like a pillow under his shirt, who goes to this clinic that is said to be able to completely remove all your body fat and make you super sexy and muscular without having to work out. Of course, this is definitely a horror story. So the man goes and turns out there's like this leech thing that's supposed to suck out all your... You know what? Anyway, bad things happen to the people that go there, and it certainly gets a lot gorier and a lot bloodier than I expected it to at the very end of the episode. Stick it out, it gets wild. The second tale in episode six is based on a story by Joe Hill, so that totally fits. And it's about a young girl who believes in the Loch Ness Monster-like urban legend of this monster called Champy that lives in the lake nearby. And, you know, spoiler alert, it's real. This was actually a sweet, kind of heartfelt story, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. It's very Stephen King. I know that Joel probably tries to separate himself from his dad quite a bit, but mm, I thought that the effects done on the monster were quite good. A lot of this entire season is low budget, and that is my biggest negative with it, but I really think they stretch it, and they certainly do this right. They work with what little they have, and they still end up putting on a show. Well, that leaves it. My number one just so happens to be the first episode. While I enjoyed everything that followed, that first episode had exactly what I wanted. It was, to me, the perfect pairing, the perfect double feature. And this episode features Grey Matter and The House of the Head. Grey Matter is based on a Stephen King short story that I read and enjoyed and never really thought I would be able to see on any screen, so this was cool. I thought this episode just looked really good, it had some actors that I recognized, and had an overall story that was creepy, disturbing, and visually impressive. What I was really surprised by was the second tale in this episode, The House of the Head. It's just about this little girl who has a dollhouse and she discovers a severed head, like a severed toy head in the dollhouse that is terrorizing the family in that dollhouse. It was just kind of adorably scary. I don't know. I thought, this is going to be really stupid. This is going to go nowhere. But it's just about this little girl trying to fight off this miniature monster and get rid of it. It was a really well done episode. I think the direction and editing presented this simple story in a pretty straightforward way. It goes and you get exactly what this little girl is feeling. She totally feels for her dolls and her dolls. It was interesting. This was just different. I love when a horror story makes up its rules and is just like, you know, deal with it. This is what you're watching. And I was into it. It isn't scary. It isn't gory. It's just... It's really different. I really like that about this. And that's what I wanted out of Creep Show. I wanted a show that was going to give me all kinds of different little things. I love short form storytelling. We don't have a proper place to go for shorts. You don't see short films on the big screen. There's there's nowhere for shorts to go. And I think there are so many stories that work well just as shorts. I think we need a lot more Creep Show is what I'm trying to get at here. I enjoyed season one of Creep Show. I am so looking forward to season two. They have to have it air around Halloween. Again, I mean, duh, of course, they just have to. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that. But that is a year away, so I'm going to have to be covering all different kinds of things on the Shutter streaming service every Saturday for Shutter Day. You subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment, let me know what were your favorite episodes. What is your rank for the season one of Creep Show? What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? And what would you like to see in season two? Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to watch this now, and I'll see you in my next video.